So one night, there was a random break in the office, cleaned us for everything, bro. Absolutely everything. All, all your stock. Bro, all my stock. Is that one of my lowest points? Because that's how I feed my family. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, some of the powers that be that was that owned the building, it put some friction between us because we work with them. And basically, there was, you know, it, it was it was hard because, you know, they didn't want to claim on insurance. They weren't this, they weren't that. So I was kind of stuck in the mud, man. Kenny, bro. Yes, yes bro. Welcome to the gateway. Thank you. Where we talk about the gateway to success, but the gateway more than that, the gateway to overcome. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, privileged to have you here, you know. Uh, Hold tight, out. workable Thank London, you. obviously, who, you know, letting us use this space. Yeah. Um, but I say it's a privilege to have you because we'll, I'm going to let you introduce the <laughs> mailroom and all that is, but yeah. I see you as a, as a, as a, as a, well, how did you describe yourself the other day? Um, <laughs> I well, I would describe it. I see you as like a you're 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 everywhere, but you, you're also not seen as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Quite yeah. behind the scenes. So yeah, yeah, even yeah. doing this, I was thinking to myself, hmm, can he like Kenny's coming to speak? I like it because <laughs> I, I honestly I think a lot of people be intrigued. This is the first podcast openly I've accepted. Yeah, I kid you not. I can tell, and I turned out a few. Bro. I said, and yeah. a lot of people will be intrigued. But yeah. you know what? With everything you've got going on, and with what you got, the world needs to be hearing because I also not it. just from like a because uh, a lot of people talking out there. Yeah, and some things are valuable, some things are not. But I know from our conversations previously, mm -hmm. every time we speak. There's value creation, yeah, well, and yeah, you know we were talking about the athletes and like the creators and even just business people, yeah. entrepreneur. Like you know, you you've supported me even through our conversations and as I'm running my business and, and vice versa. Yeah, cool. So yeah, man, there's value, man. So Kenny, nice to have you, bro. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, but yo, talk to me, man. Let's just go straight into it. Yes. The mail room. Yes. What's the mail room about? <laughs> talk to me. Um. You know, what you do at Gateway, man. Do you yeah. know what I mean? We're one in the same, I guess. Do you know what I'm saying? We facilitate the same space, but we, we're brothers in arms at the same time. Um, yeah, so um, the Melrim is a sports marketing agency. Um, we focus on, like, holistic methods of helping our athletes to engage with the right audiences, but taking, like, how can I say it? I don't want to just be, like, an orthodox and make it sound too, like, yeah, we're yeah, trying yeah, to sell yeah, it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. the main thing is it's about you know, our approach with our athletes. Do you know what I'm saying? They're not just commodities. They're not livestock. Yeah. We care about them. It's about them retaining their personal voices, being in control of their own narratives and actually aligning them with things that they have you know, interest in. I think, you know, when I first started, I, you know, one of the, and it's still an issue now, actually, if I'm honest with you, a lot of the people, um, a lot of the athletes that are represented by said companies or individuals, yeah. um, the people that are representing them don't, People can always do a good job, but when you don't understand, it's not really personal, you can always see where there's a bit of a block. Yes. Meaning, you know, I always say, um, we want to work with people that want to work with us. It's never a forced relationship. Mm, love that. In doing so, we're able to get the best out of our athletes because they trust us, right? Meaning PR and marketing. Where do we want to lend your voice to? What conversations do we want to have? It's about, um, you know, um, social media management, right? It's not about creating false narratives, but we understand, no pun intended, that's the gateway to your, yeah, 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 <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, to the yeah, eyes, yeah. to the rest well, of the well, world. I'm a sick thing that pun straight off. <laughs> no so I, what I'm saying is that, yeah. you know, even with your social media, how are you managing this? Because I always say when you're posting something, it's just not just a good looking picture. Even your captions have to be, um, you know, I, I tend to say you need to have open-ended questions or conversations that allow people to engage. It's not just, we got, you know, football, we go again, mm. didn't have a great game, but what are you doing to allow your, yeah. your consumers to engage and you build a backstory through conversation? Then again, which then, you know, using that gateway from your, from your social media, opening up the floodgates to, or the roadmap to 
um, the brands that you want to work with and partner with. Yeah. And again, there's creative content partnerships, there's brand partnerships. Uh, um, the list kind of goes on, man. But for me, it's just about like we care. That's mm. the best thing. And, you know, without getting into the whole hoo-ha, but the name the Melrum is really, it's extremely simple. You know the postal service, bro. There's one thing that you expect and that's for them to deliver. Yeah. It's a very simple message. Like yeah. whatever it is that we say that we're going to do for you, our main objective is just to deliver. That's it, simple. man. Some of the most like impactful business names are also the most simple yeah. ones as well, man. Yeah, Sick. No, I love it. I think when I first saw the mail room, I was instantly like drawn to it. Yeah, and I think man. a lot of people are, do you know what I mean? Because I uh, you're uh, obviously, you know, you're running a talent agency, it's called my marketing agency, but you're also a creative. That's what I, yeah. do you know what I mean? I see, yeah, yeah, I, you know what course. I mean? Like you're also a creative as well. So I know that comes into your work. Yes. Definitely. But like, tell me, man, how did you, um, like, how did the mail room even come about? Like, man. and like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's crazy. Cause I fell into this. You're right. I, I started off as a creative. Well, I'm still a creative, I yeah, guess yeah, yeah, anyway. Yeah. If, honestly, it's such a long journey, man. But um, my background's in fashion. Yeah. That's where I started off. Um, designing. Um, had a, a fashion brand, like, which was, I guess, you know, throughout the 2000s was quite reputable. Uh, we done like Harvey Nichols, Selfridges, um, you name it. Like, we, we was doing quite well, I guess. Mm. Um, and then, do you know what it is? Through time, I built up a good network. I was doing that like, creative consultancy, freelance designing for a lot of people like within the industry. Yeah. And then, um, so one other customer of mine was uh, Wilfred Zaha, who plays for Crystal Palace. Bro, but at the time, I'll be honest, like, I like sports not heavily. I wasn't heavily yeah, into yeah, it. Yeah, and I was yeah. just like, so one day someone on my team was like um, doing the sales and they were just like, oh, this, the young guy at Crystal Palace is like buying clothes every week. I'm like, okay, just let him buy then. Yeah, He's yeah, another keep, customer. Keep He's coming, no favorites. Do you yeah, know what I mean? But just, like just let him purchase, yeah. you know? And I wasn't that bothered. But then one day he, he sent me a DM on Twitter. I'll never forget it. And he was just like, we just, you know, we started talking. So um, we formed a bit of a relationship. Obviously, I'm a bit old, older than Wilfred. And this was like his transfer over to, from, um, I think he he just moved from Crystal Palace to Manchester United and he was just coming back yeah. um, after just not really a great spell. And then um, I remember he was coming to pick clothes off, off of me and he met me at my mother-in-law's house, actually. And what was supposed to be like a quick two-minute exchange ended up being a, an hour, two-hour conversation. Yeah. But I didn't speak to him about football and I think that's what he loved. It was just about you, what you're doing, you from Croydon, this, that. He's a young guy, right. Lamborghini, he's just doing well. But I think he was at like a, a you know, a mid-stage in his, in his life. So we just kind of mixed it up and kicked it off. Stayed in contact, bro. Um, again, at this point, I'll be honest, I was... Um, in a design job. So I was at, uh, well, I started off doing design for TK Maxx, like their that's, website that's... and just creative, like email marketing. Then I moved to, I don't know if you remember um, uh, a magazine called Reader's Digest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah so yeah, it was yeah. like for like, a, a, like more of a mature market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was um, working for a company which basically was helping and Reader's Digest to go digital. Okay, sick. Um, yeah, because so, they were like massive, crazy mail outs. Yeah, yeah. so what yeah, you would yeah. do is they would send you like magazines each yeah, week or each yeah, month yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. it is. So we'd do the covers, design the covers and X, Y, Z. But um, what it was is that they just needed the transit. So I was, I was earning decent money yeah. like doing design, I guess. But um, Wolf came to me one day and he was like, look, I want to start a brand. You're the guy I know. We've got a relationship, so and so. And for me, I just don't like jumping at stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I kind of was like, okay, cool, but let me think about it, so and so. So I spoke to like a few people, and I just said, okay, let me help. So I started designing, helping him out, until he realized how much goes into it, even financially. Yeah. I got to survive. Do you know what I mean? I'm not here yeah, to do freebies. Of course, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> so um, we spoke about it. Uh, we had a great conversation, and then he was like, I want you to come on as a fifty-fifty business partner with me. So I was like, all right, cool, let's do this. So we done it, really built it out, bro. And I'll be honest, it really exploded. Like the headwear, we was, the numbers we was doing, I guess it was, was wild at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, again, through time, I'm, I'm going to really skip through this part. Yeah, it's yeah. very long, but um, through that relationship and just like strategic planning and, and, and using the network, that ended up helping to design for Crystal Palace, doing like their, their sports marketing. Um, also, um, we the, the the line we got into the the club store and was selling out at the club stores they had it in all like their you know their local stores as yeah, well yeah, yeah. and then um they was giving us like the electric electronic billboards bro it was wild <laughs> i ended up having through that relationship as well i ended up having um an office in um 
in Carnaby Street or just off Soho actually nice. at the Crystal Palace head office, but the ground floor. So yeah, yeah. all like the the, the 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 kit shoots and those kind of things we they would do on in, in my office on the ground floor. Um, so at the time where things had really started to boom for both brands, actually, yeah, yeah. I took a trip to to China to sort out my, my manufacturing. So I took maybe like two two weeks out, just going through materials, cut, um, cuts, patterns, everything else, and I came back. But we I invested a lot of money in at this point, right? Um, so we came back and I left the stuff in um, uh, what's it called in my in my office downstairs. Yeah. But before I get to that, I'm I'm saying this for a reason at this point. So before that, what I would do is because now me and Will for business partners in this brand. Anytime he's having like any of his brand deals, I'd go with him to leverage the brand. Yes. Yeah. So we had a few. You know, he was coming out of a deal with Nike, and um, he was looking, he was having conversations in different places. And um, I would just go with him, just like, yeah, da, 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 come come with me, so-and-so. And then um, one thing I just noticed straight off the back is that this guy's in a lot of big conversations and there's no representation around. Bro, it's mad. Like, can you imagine one of your athletes to go, go and have a conversation with, with Nike and you're not there? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, to start yeah, yeah, the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's your job to, yeah. to make sure that they understand. Do you understand the business, yeah, right? Yeah, for real. And you can, you, can, you can speak from also an unbiased perspective, a non-emotional perspective. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd go with him. And then I remember there was one meeting that we sat in and it sounded great. It was with a brand, by the way. And it was just like, oh, yeah, we want to make you like the global face for this and this. I don't want to say the brand, by the way. That's yeah, why. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we, you know, we want to do 360 because it's club country people pick up on it club country yeah. and then you the face and i remember like oh, sounds great like commercially you're gonna do this but remember i'm only here for him with long live yeah and then um, i remember sitting there like thinking okay so what about the numbers like no one's talking about anything and you know he's like yeah it sounds great because it was great commercially and then i think they you know i think i kind of butted in a bit like okay so what about the numbers and when they said that, oh you're gonna give we stepped aside and spoke and i said listen that's when when it's not, um, when the numbers are not matching up to, mm. you know, the commitments, that's a slave deal, bro. Because mm. I know you as well. You earn decent money, especially footballers. Of course. So when, you know, all the, 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 the hype around this thing goes and they're pulling you out every five seconds to do all these campaigns, but it's not matching up for how much you're earning, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're not going to want to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we spoke about it. It didn't end up taking the deal. And then I remember us having a conversation organically and just being like, okay, um, I was going to help him, like, just building his personal brand and, and brand identity. It was very organic in the beginning stages. And then, um, yeah, like, you know, we, I started to do it again. And when he came out Nike, he was doing really well, like in terms of helping him, like social media management, yeah. connecting the dots and cultural alignment. And look, I think we managed to generate quite a bit, like even from a numbers perspective within that first year. But it was more about his brand profile because at the time it was like, everyone was thinking, Wilf is this person, he's that character, he's a bit... You know, he might be moaning and da, da da And I'm saying, if you understand the person who he is, this guy is like one of the loveliest guys and most caring guys. You yeah, meet, of course. Because they're in the papers, they're going to say this, they're going to say that. Oh, you it's, know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. So, um, yeah, so, you know, I, I started helping with that. Then we spit, skip back down to what I was talking about, the whole long live and coming back from China. So one night, there was a random break in the office, cleaned us for everything, bro. Absolutely everything. All, all your stock. Bro, all my stock. Is that one of my lowest points? Because that's how I feed my family. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, some of the powers that be that was that owned the building, it put some friction between us because we work with them. And basically, there was, you know, it, it, was, it was hard because, you know, they didn't want to claim on insurance. They weren't this, they weren't that. So I was kind of stuck in the mud, man. Do you know what I mean? Yikes. So um, what happened is, obviously, to, you know, I, I was trying to get pick myself back up again, but emotionally, I just went there. I was, you know, it, it took a toll on loads of things from marriage yeah, to, yeah, of course, man. to life. To, you've been built, you've, this is this is a bro, whole, I could, yeah. I could stay in this place for a long time. This yeah. is a whole thing. Bro, it's tough, man. I was, I, I just felt like just long, I just wanted to quit. Do you get what I'm saying at this point? I and mean, I never feel like that. Yeah. So um, what I'd done was, um, just because of that, I just kind of started to lean a bit more on helping out. Well, I had more, a bit more free time. Yeah. So my other business partner for my other brand, he knew what the situation was. But at this time, I was a lot, in most of my brands, I'm, I'm probably the most active one, yeah. just by nature. Just as in you. He's, yeah, do you get what I mean? So that's not to say that he's not, but it's just uh, by nature. So I just started to move with Wolf a bit more and just going with everywhere. And I just, I have a good network based on my past, I guess. Mm. So I was using a lot of those to kind of bring him situations. 
And I saw, do you know what? After some time, I thought, do you know what? There's one is we're adding real value here. Two, I can start to see a lane down here. And three, do you know what it is? This thing where I didn't really want to, I never planned on having an agency, but I realized that what I'm doing is much bigger than me. Mm. Like that was the number one thing because mentorship, changing lives, support as a friend slash family who, you know, and you, you want to be careful in that gray area, but at the same time, you want to give the most support that you can where they understand you, you understand them. So as I was doing it, bro, like, I remember the, st- I still remember the first brand deal I, br- I brought with. Bro, I'm not, okay, I'm not, I won't say the figure, but for what I was used to getting, mm-hmm. bro, we done a, wa- a walkthrough. It was for Voxy Mobile, I can say that, mm-hmm. yeah? We done a walkthrough, bro. And, um, okay, he had to go on the press board, take some pictures. We was there in and out within an hour. What I made, I got home and I had the money within like three hours. I was like, what the hell? Like, I can make this, like, you can make money this quickly. Nuts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I remember, I, once I got that first taste of like, okay, like now, you know, this is getting, this is tangible, like yeah. where we, we're doing something. I said, yeah, I, I, I just need to be a bit more, it's not, obviously we want money. It's not about that. It's yeah. like, what is the longevity within this game? And then that's when I started to build out a plan. And then it was, from there, it was like, recommendations and this and personal networks and my second client was Mikel Antonio obviously at West Ham do you know what I mean yeah but I went to school with Mikel so he was a year younger than me I know he's agent also so it was very organic and again even when um, I had the conversation with Mikel and his agent I, I never forget right this big personality personality um, Mikel Antonio do you know what he said to me Kenny, where was you when I was in and I was in the England squad? Because right now I don't know if I've got any commercial value, bro. You can step outside of here. The BT Hope United. He's one of the big faces. The campaign that we just finished about a month ago. Yeah. Because he's so organic, but unauthentic. But it takes someone to kind of put the batteries in your in in, in your back and be like the eyes, the mouthpiece, and the feet to help you to navigate. Hundred percent. And bro, look what he's doing now. Hundred On the pitch and off the pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, like bro, it's just it's 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 grown to where it is now, man. That's Sick. It, I, I, you know we can go on for the, in the intricate details, but for the most part, bro, that's but, kind of how. Yo, it's going. listen, man. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The thing is, I'm 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 a host of this, but I was enjoying that like a podcast listener, like like mm. a show listener, because <laughs> that's that journey. Yeah, is is what I was literally smiling. This, this camera's gonna see, see me smile. <laughs> oh, that journey yeah, is what yeah. like inspires me significantly. Of do you course. know what I mean? Because Thank you. you, especially like from working in a business now, from building up my own agency, I'm realizing more than ever when I see a business at face value, the first form I'm thinking of what's behind that. Mm. Like what is behind that? What is that journey? Like they can see that moment. So now, well, these people see you, Baratsi, Joshua Baratsi, obviously yeah, one yeah, of your of other clients, but they see you with um, Cantonio, see you with Will, et cetera. But then... Like that journey before that, and they, even there's even another layer of we didn't yeah, even yeah. unpack all of it. Yeah, but um, no, nah, exceptionally sick, and I'm 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 excited for what you've done, but also what you're going to be doing, man. I appreciate it. But bro. yeah, man. But I mean, tell me, like, what was, <laughs> like, yeah, what has been like some of the challenge, the unseen challenges? Because yeah. it's, it's that's a layered question as well. Yeah. But like, I guess from a from an entrepreneurial perspective, yeah, like building and growing a business. Yeah, and obviously you're you're, you're married to yeah, two, yeah, two kids. kids. Yeah, um, growing the family, growing a business. Yeah, yeah. Time constraints, needing to be in probably multiple places at the same time, and yeah. it's tough. It's extremely tough, bro. <laughs> it's tough. It's extremely tough, man. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's tough. I guess one thing I always say is like a popular saying, like you know, different levels, different devils, mm. and it's all relative, isn't it? And I say, life doesn't really get easier. You just learn how to manage things a bit better so it doesn't feel as stressful. Yeah. Right? Because everything's about how you feel. Have you been in these deep waters before? When you have, you can understand it. So, you know, I think in the beginning stages where I give quite a lot of service to my guys, I'm everywhere with them. Mm. Like, you you see, I'm in the background somewhere. Mm. Right? Um, but I knew there was a part, right? Sometimes I look at what I'm doing now and I think, I don't know how I was doing it back then with the amount of clients that I had. But um, I guess was as I started to build out is like being able to deliver the same level of service to multiple people, mm. and everyone is it's bespoke, isn't it? So it's not everyone with the same brush. We're not someone who we're not people who just um, manage an inbox. Yeah. We're very personal. We're hands on. Absolutely. So um, 
yeah, one of the struggles was growing, I think. Then also trusting other people with workloads that you do. Like I'm used to being, you know, the, the, the publicist, the manager, the photographer, the video, videographer, you know, the front man, the back man, like, you name it. I do everything. Yeah. So to know, like I remember in the beginning, from the stage, CEO to the bellboy. Oh my bro, I done it. I do <laughs> that's everything. It, that's it. So I remember even certain times in the beginning stages, bro. And um, this is like that, that entrepreneurial disease, man. But there were certain emails that need to be sent out, and I would say to someone in the team, "Oh, could you send this out?" If ten minutes have gone and they ain't send it out, I just send it out and I CC them into it <laughs> because they got to see like this is the urgency. Do you yeah, get what I'm saying? I understand. Yeah, I'm like. Oh, I've just told you what what are you do, possibly doing that you can't send the email? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I used to do that all the time. But then you you learn like that's not the way to manage people. Yeah. Get them in comfortable environments. Show them through action what it is that you want. Be open with your people. So scaling up the company was, I think, in 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 the beginning stage, it was hard delegating time between family, as we just spoke about. Um, finances. Yeah. Because I've still got to survive. Yeah. And you can have a conversation with a brand for six months and nothing materializes. 100. Bro. I can have 30 conversations now and you can be lucky if one get back to you. Yeah. Or materializes. It's just the name yeah. of the game, isn't it? Um, obviously, we hope that one materializes. But yeah, 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 for sure. So, yeah, I guess at different stages, it's just slow. I think the growth at each stage is more about dealing with people having awkward conversations. Maybe sometimes you was this hands-on with someone and now you've got more people. So you're giving this person a bit more. And then they're like, well, I don't feel like, you know, you're, 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 you're delivering the right service for me. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you've got to go back, restructure, recoup. Um, now, nah, sick. Yeah. I, but like, I think um, like even in the mix of the challenges, the thing that I see, like when I think of like, and the thing is, I see the word, every time I say the word entrepreneur, entrepreneurism, like I always feel funny because because of how much of a buzzword it is now. Do you know what mm. I mean? And like I feel like it's almost taken a, it's almost just any 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 anyone's using yeah. it, right? But I mean it in its truest and purest sense when we're talking now. Like even in the midst of the challenges, I see the the, the best entrepreneurs just find a way. Yeah. Like when I first um, when we first interacted, probably mm. on is a the Instagram maybe, Instagram. Think, yeah. And again, and actually, let me say this: the reason why how we interacted actually is is because I see the mailroom and I see the mailroom like just showing love. Yeah, of course, just man. showing love, you know, bro. <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay, the moment they're seeing what we're up to, and they're just showing love, and I was like, cool, and I check them out, think, right, and just I'm now showing love back, and then yeah, I was like, you know what? And I'm actually in the office here, <laughs> crazy. And I was leaving, and I said, oh, let me leave a voice. Yeah, voice message. Yeah, message. I remember that. Yeah, I remember. And we were just going back and forth, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, we yeah. need to link up and chop yes. up. And yeah. one thing that I took from our, our messages was that you care about your clients. Yeah, definitely. Your 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 athlete family. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. amongst all of the challenges, mm -hmm. the time constra constraints, like for your business, I can tell that you care and that you're you're yeah. there and you're present. Which I think in a in a in a people services business mm. in a client services business it's so important man 100 percent, like bro. ridiculously important you're the same yeah <laughs> and i think that's what it is yeah, yeah. i look at you and i'm like okay they're just here they're just there there's this and i tell you what's what, what also being key especially in like in more the latter stage like more recent times right anyone that i know that i speak to that mentions your name it's always in good light and uh, there's there's I probably two people that i know if they have if they've been in contact with you, and I'm, I'm, I haven't told you this before, yeah. I know if they've spoken to you or this other person and they're speaking well of you, I have more trust in that person because of how much yeah, I yeah. have value in you. Yeah, bro, you I it? appreciate it, man. No, that's honest truth. No, bro, I yeah. appreciate it and I completely understand. I think um, one of your other clients, OJ. Yeah, yeah of course. When uh, when I, when I he, when he realised that we knew each other, because yeah. I knew obviously from the track, obviously, yeah, of course. he was like, I knew you were like Kenny. <laughs> I knew you were like Kenny. Because and in, in you, you know you click with people, right? Yeah, of but course. also in the industry, there's not um, there's not like a tremendous I don't know there's not a tremendous amount of people that I've come across who I can say fully I can vouch. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So for example, if if I met an athlete, you know, yeah. talking about a number of agents or businesses or whatever, yeah, yeah, like. Yeah. I would have no problem saying, yo, you need to speak with these guys because I know you're going to be cared for. Mm. And I think, obviously, I think that's like, you made a point about uh, Mikhail saying uh, a point in his career when, when he met, where, you, where were you when I was an English squad? Mm. I don't feel like I have commercial value. 
Mm. And in my head, I'm thinking, dude, like, yeah, bro. <laughs> how? But I guess I'm not putting words into anyone's mouth, but I'm assuming that for whatever reason, there was a lack of confidence, maybe, or yeah. a lack of, or, 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 or either way, for one reason or another, there wasn't the, the understanding that actually there's value here, man. Mm. And I think that's where like good management come in, really. Yeah. Like, I think there's a lot of pressure on athletes to do a lot of different things, and I can't stress the need to have a good team, bro. Remember, what we do is still extremely new. Yeah. Especially in football. Yeah. Bro, Massively because... Massively in football. Massively. It's, it's like, um, you're kind of left to do what you need to do. Remember, yeah. there's only a few key players in, in certain industries that have, like, elite status. And um, in football, maybe, well, David Beckham, Eric Cantona, Thierry Henry, Didier Drogba. There's a few people, obviously. Um, but commercially... Most people, Mikel Antonio is a massive name at the club. Wilfred Zaha is a massive name at his club. He is the talisman of the club, right? And I say that with all due respect. But um, you can imagine, like, for me now thinking, when I understand these guys and I look at the landscape, I think, do you know how nuts it is for someone like that to say that to me? You have a, such an amazing story, but it takes a specific person to, to be able to understand your story and say, how do we put it on the big screen? And again, this is actually the same thing that you're doing with, with, with your clients. You know, I don't even like the word clients. It sounds a bit too... Uh, sounds a bit too distant. Yeah, like it's, it's, yeah, it's so we, funny. Yeah, that's what a gateway. I always call it the family. Like, yeah. The family. Because I tell you what, it is a family. Yeah. Like my wife knows all of the clients. All of our the clients. same, man. They see, yeah. she, she understands. She understands that like, yo, it's fam. Yeah, that's it. You know? You get invited to graduations, you get invited to birthdays, you get invited to... And because when you're spending so much time with people and you're not just helping them... I mean, one of the things that I've found, yeah, is that you're not just helping them to make money. You're helping their career. It's life, man. Yeah, it's life. It's It's actually life. Yeah, it's it's life. It's life, man. So, um... But I mean, like, what do you feel like from a from an athlete perspective now? Like, what do you feel athletes need to be mindful of when when choosing management? Because as you will know, there's there's more athletes out there who want management, yeah, um, than there is actually, yeah, well, managers and good managers yeah. to to provide that service, yeah. And um, I sometimes wonder whether at times you know you might get a message from an athlete who might want management because they feel that's what they need to have, yeah. Maybe actually it's not what's right for them at that time. Mm-hmm. But yeah, what do you what do you say on that? So for athletes that want management, yeah, like what do they need to be thinking about? Like for example, are there things that athletes can be doing themselves be- yeah. before they even? Yeah, I got you. Mm. Well, for me, number one is this, right? You got to get your house right. So that's whatever your whatever field you're in. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? I always say this, yeah. With no matter how much commercial value you have in you. If we take you away from your bread and butter, say in football, for instance, and you're not performing on the pitch and we're doing all these commercial things, we're doing a bad job. Mm. It's counterproductive because it doesn't make sense. Mm. You can have all these deals and then flop in football tomorrow. You can't provide for your family. And then what yeah. does this mean? It will be here today, gone tomorrow. That's in, yes, so interesting. you gotta, you yeah. got to be performing. And we understand people have dips in it, but yeah. you got to be performing. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about, yeah, everyone's got to be elite status, yeah. but you just have to be performing. Yeah. Make sure that you're in a good place. Like, just like within yourself. And then again, what we do is help you to lighten the load. In the... So we look for people that, you know, are, you know, have unique stories, I guess. And it's, it's personal. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. You're, you're always going to get the odd situation where you're, you're paired with someone then, and then you get to know them. But a lot of the time, it's just that, for me, it's organically what are you kind of trying to do to show your story. That's number one. That's and even outside of management. That goes for brands too. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. It's like, what are you doing to exercise your personality across your networks? And this doesn't mean you have to create a TikTok and do mad stuff 24-7. <laughs> it just means that you care about the people that you're engaging with. Yeah. Because then once we pick up on that, versus added with, you know, um, your on-field playing, you know, or how you're doing within your, your field, then we have something that we can come and push momentum behind. But otherwise it becomes very laggy. Yeah where, okay, we want to do this. And we've had athletes like that, like really big named clients. Oh, we want to do this. Oh, I don't want to do it. I want to do this. I don't want to do it. During the pandemic, we was bringing them a lot of business. Yeah, and this was very hard. And then, you know, they was doing amazing. Um, Again, it's not to be disrespectful. And then something happened and it was a huge decline. But if you had built your profile, you know, like, especially like football's very unforgiving, mm. the fans. 
So I said, once you start to work on your social media presence and you allow people to engage with you or to understand who you are, when you hit upon tough times, they connect with a person and not just someone that they see on the TV. Yeah. So they can vouch for you and say, do you know what? He's having a bad run, but we know what he's like because he's given a bit of um, himself or, yeah. or, or herself to us. Um, and this is why I think it's important because everyone's like, oh, they want to stay away from social media and you're always going to get haters or mad people online. But for the most part, you need to be personable to some degree. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. So people can vouch for you. It's just loads of different things. There's not one way. Yeah, that, that, there's a point you made there about performance and like, I guess, commercial value, let me call it that. Uh, yeah. And yeah. that relationship. Because yeah. I remember watching The Last Dance and Michael Jordan was like, oh my yo, like, if I never made the, those, those, those points, if I never was averaging, you see that Nike deal? Never yes, be there. it doesn't happen. You know, and I always say the greatest commercial, like, beasts in the sports game they are beasts on the court in yeah. the arena in the boxing ring um but on the flip i guess we have that challenge where we're now in a time where like i guess the rise of the influencer yeah. who hasn't necessarily got a um a, a, a specific like excellence in yeah. any specific area but they're able to like engage a community and then this is where i get excited for athletes because i like, look influencers are making amazing and building amazing communities, doing amazing things. And they might not even be excelling at anything particular, but yeah. they're able to engage the community. Athletes, you guys are excelling. You guys are some of the, like 1% of the 1% in this world Bro, who are so skilled. It's mad, right? If they can engage that community. It's crazy. Clear. People with millions of followers, bro, couldn't even sell 10 t-shirts. Yeah. It's tough. <laughs> it's tough. It's mad. Yeah. But I guess that's also the challenge, right? Because they are... Like I find that athletes are so focused on they are who they are because they're so driven. Like, what would you say is one of the key things that you've taken from working with, I guess, athletes, sports people, like for yourself, yeah. like from a, because I, I can take a lot from, from yeah. them. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what it is? I think one of the things is, right, is that sometimes we want a lot from them. And you know, there's always that people say, we pay your wages. No, you don't. That's mm -hmm. not, yeah, let's not do that. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Because that's in every job, right? Um, but what I do say when you're with them day to day and you actually see how much time and effort like they put into their craft, you respect it a whole lot more. Mm, yeah. So sure. that's one thing I don't take for granted. So, and their time is extremely valuable because yeah. it's very limited and they've got to be the best of the best to make it in whatever field they it's are. True. The mental side as well is crazy. There was a, um, I can't remember what book I was reading, but it says that actually the link between physical stress and mental stress, the body doesn't know no different. Mm. which is nuts so that's why you get people you know some people be like you're behind the computer all day why are you tired for yeah because the brain operates yeah, the yeah, same yeah. obviously there's that. physical stress yeah. but that the brain operates in the same way yeah. in terms of the rest that it needs so um for me the thing i, I guess the thing that I, I i appreciate with these guys is that you know they're dedicated to their craft mm. and um as i said you, you get so used to seeing them week in week out you just think you you own them based on your love and support for whatever game it is so um do you feel sorry yeah. it's, it's, no, it pops in my head i got asked do you feel uh a certain like weight of responsibility knowing how much i guess your clients are relying and looking to you for support? oh bro massive there's certain conversations i have and i can't sleep and my missus is just like you gotta go to sleep man I'm arguing people on the phone two o'clock in the morning because the time zone difference is yeah. this, that, and the third. Listen, man, I I feel a huge weight. I'll just tell you, I'm everywhere with them. And she will always say, but do you have to go everywhere with them? Yes, I do. <laughs> because I've had, I hear horror stories. You've sent someone to go and do something somewhere. Yeah. And because they don't want to look like the bad guy, you've got um fans running up to them and this and arcs and extra. You send them on a shoot. Yeah. You know that shoot is supposed to be only an hour and a half because that's what they're contracted to. Next minute, yeah. oh, could you do this? There's extra comms, but they're not paid for that. Yeah. Oh, there's a day we need an extra half an hour. Yeah. No, because they need to go there. But I make, like, bro, trust me, that's my thing. Yeah. Like, make sure that they are well serviced and looked after because at the end of the day, it's my responsibility to make sure that they're okay. <laughs> yeah man it's weighty very weighty it's weighty man and I think that's again to the athletes out there like when we talk about like management who care I think you want to look for management who feel that weight yeah. that weight of responsibility don't get me wrong there's another side to it where you know we've got a business to run and also yeah, it's it's you know business running a business in itself is difficult but yeah. that weightiness that I feel and you're saying you feel yeah, yeah. man 
you, it drives you to do well for your club. Yep. You know what I mean, it drives you. It drives you, man. Um, how do you manage it though, like from a from a stress level? Because as we said at the beginning, yeah, running the business is challenging, and um, I guess things don't always go right. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes things can go deals fall through. Yeah. Um, plenty of deals fall through actually. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. plenty. Like you say, like you know, you can hit a hundred brands up, and you know. You, you, you're going to get that one deal, two deals off the back yeah, of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I already know you're resilient because of you, you've got a business going. Mm. But like, what are some of those like resilient, what are some of the more resilient traits that you've had to find, do you know what I mean? Like in yourself. Because mm. if, you, if, if you were to stop, bro, even if you were to have stopped when they, their man took all your stuff from Ooh. the ground floor. Yeah. We wouldn't be here. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think it's purpose, man. I, do you know what? I, I don't know. You know, I'm not really worried about how this comes across, but I think anything I'm going to put my hands to, I'll do well in. Well in. That's, that's just That's yeah, me being honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, whether it's fashion, whether it's this, whether it's marketing. Oh, I love that. And I've been able to create something somewhere because yeah. I pay attention to detail. That's my core value, right? I see. Um, like those intricate things that people probably miss. Um but in terms of resilience, it's just about understanding, man, what it is that you want to achieve in life. You don't know. As I said, I didn't plan to be here. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm here. Yeah. So at the end of the day, if I'm if I'm if I'm dedicating my time focus here, make sure that I'm going to do a good job. Because like I said, um you you just know you just have a like, you, you can feel the pressure of like a higher calling. Like obviously, like God is 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 also like a, 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 a you know, like a safe haven for me. My family, do you get what I'm saying? Mm. But I think, again, for the most part, one thing that I don't want to take out and make it look like all of this is manufactured, sometimes it just comes down to personality types, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm probably a lot more laid... Like, my friends will tell you, I'm a lot more laid back than most people. Yeah. Doesn't mean I'm just, like, nonchalant. Like, but I, I mean, like, when I say that, like, hard, not a lot of it, things stress me. Yeah. But outwardly, I don't allow it to show. Mm. I had this conversation twice today already. Because there were certain things that should have been like on top of my head. And I said, okay, what's next though? Yeah. We just got to figure it out. I don't believe in just sitting there and sulking about it. Yeah, yeah. And you you, you have that composure. So, yeah. And yeah. But you need that as well because you're around people who are under a lot of high pressure. Imagine if you're now bubbling Bro, like a... I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finished. I can't be the other person. I'm supposed to be the, I'm supposed to be the calm one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For real, man. That's for it, real. Man. The composure that you, you have, it gives like comfort to others mm. as well do you know what I mean um, without even like delving too much into because you know into the family like mm -hmm. you know everyone, personal family yeah you know? of course but um, but I think there's, there's something here because again like, I'm very interested in like that, that behind the scenes journey yeah. do you know what I mean and like I guess there's um, I don't know man I think there's men like uh, you know sometimes when you say certain things people don't understand the context of how you're saying it but we say it anyway and then we see where we land but like as men, I do feel that there are some uh, misrepresentations of like male emotion. Oh, bro, yeah. come on. Yeah, we yeah. know this already. Yeah, yeah, for real. And um, like <laughs> in this journey, I've found myself doing things or like responding to things in ways that I never would before. And I think at times when it's been like the most lowest moments, the stressful moments, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people will always assume that, like, you know, you're a man, in it? So, like, you're calm. Do you know what I mean? Like, on the outside, yeah, Kenny, man, he's married. He's got two kids. Look at him. He's working. He's balling. Like, life is good for that brother. Mm. But they don't know. They got no idea. <laughs> they don't know. Bro, like, even me and you, when we have our conversations, bro, yeah. sometimes just to pick up a phone call because, you know, I have a good circle, like a band of brothers. I don't have like a huge... I know a lot of people. I don't have a lot of people on my inner circle. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's but why that's, it's how fast we connected is very yeah, unique yeah. for my personality and yeah. the people around me. But yeah, I, and I find those conversations, I find them extremely helpful. We've talked about this before, about that kind of... Again, people might think it's how dramatic, but that loneliness, that found the loneliness. Oh man, yeah, it's, it's a very lonely place, bro. It's it's lonely and definitely not dramatic, by the way. Yeah, tell me why it's lonely. And the reason I say that because people, even me, maybe before I had even stepped into this, like you asked me five, six years ago, and like, let's say I listen to a podcast and someone talking about being a founder is lonely. I don't think I would have really understood what they were saying at that time, bro. Now 
I understand. <laughs> yeah, because you're, you're at a different stage. Like, yeah. You know, we start stuff, we have ideas, but you've executed up to the point that we, that you are now. Like someone said to me, one of, one of the guys on my team one, one day, we went out with someone and then um, with like some guys, I didn't even invite them, but it was from America and they yeah. came over. So we was there and we hosted, I think I just got up and paid for it in it. Like, and I think, you know, I don't say that sound funny, but um, it was a lot. Because there was them, and then there was extras, and there was other people. Mm. But in my head, I thought they're here, and we've got to show them that you know, show them love, yeah, yeah. And when they came, when when it was paid for, the guy stood up. He's an American. He's like, "Yo, um, actually, I'll just say it was with Brandon Marshall from yeah. I Am Athlete." Yes, yeah, it. And I'll never forget. He turned around and he was like, "Yo, who paid the bill, man?" I was like, "Oh yeah, I paid it." He said, "What? Why'd you do that?" I've never had a man pay for my bill in my life. <laughs> and it was funny. And he turned around and I was like, yeah, it's nothing. Because they didn't see how much. Obviously, everyone's got money there, right? It's yeah, not a yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one knew how much it was. But the amount that was ordered, people knew it was quite a bit. And one of the guys that worked with me pulled me over and he said, do you know what it is, Kenny? I rate you. But you have main man syndrome. <laughs> I did, I've never heard that before. I said, I said, you need to elaborate. What is that? He said, because you have a weight of responsibility that whether you accept it or not, it's on you. And that, again, that comes from maybe through just leadership. Yeah. And sometimes that comes of having foresight. I know that this is a relationship. So this is where it is. Or you've got to be the first one in, last one out. You've got to be the person that helps this person when they're going through stuff. It's their feelings before yours. And like you said, it can take its toll. But um, it's just the re- weight of responsibility that comes along with it. So again, where you're the person who's always giving, 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 mm. where do you go and pour? Like, who pours into your cup? Mm. I've just done that. Now I'm I'm empty. Mm. So um, and every day you're pouring. Every every day, every second. Every of day. The day, when you pouring. wake up, you're pouring. you have that, and then you pour. You're pouring. You pour. So what is it? That's yeah. why again, I always say, like, bro, like our conversation, our, our relationship built extremely fast. But which is you? Un- which is I find. I it's find that is unique. unique. Yeah, it is. it's unique, especially as you get older. Because as you get older, you get more guarded. I think when it comes to personal yeah. and letting people into the circle. Also, from a trust thing as yeah. well. You know, you don't know what people's are intentions are. Yeah. And, you know, but I think, man, that accountability for one yeah. and support is, is another thing. Definitely. And I think those are two things that I even yesterday I was talking to someone about mm. accountability because like. You know, especially as, 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 as in these positions, like when you're running a business and you have people looking to you, you could end up being that mad king, yeah. going off in a funny direction. But I know for sure, without doubt, even just from, let's say, from a content perspective or even on my personal channels, if you saw me consistently yeah. speaking in a way which is different to how you know me yeah. in a crowd, with a, consistently yeah. with a straight crowd, which is a different crowd, yeah. I know you'll mess with me. Like, Dad, what's going on, man? How you yeah. doing, bro? What's 100%. up? You'll find a way to 100%. pick it up from me 100%. and be like, Dad, what's up? Accountability, bro. Our lives are very, are, 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 are strange, like very weirdly, like very similar. Yeah. yeah Do you yeah, get yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I know. Like, very, I think that was one of the first things we picked up. Yeah. Black conduct, type of people we are, people we know, you know, the, our, our beliefs, family set yeah. up, like the businesses. And, you know, from the jump, it was just like, oh, so you get it. That's what it's about, man. It's important, man. And bro, it's mad because I know I'm gonna have to wrap it up, but yeah. I feel like I haven't even unpacked. Yeah, I know it's crazy, it's right? Crazy, we could like, do this just, forever. It's just bro. a snippet of, of things, Honestly. man. Honestly, but I mean, we're gonna do it again anyway for yeah. sure. It's it's a, it's a, it's a it's a journey, man. Yeah. Cool. But I think like I guess to, to to kind of bring it full circle. I mean, first I'm gonna give you props because Thank you, um, running running but also building business is uh, it's like a it's a really um, it's a really challenging thing to do to create something from nothing. Mm-hmm. Like to have, and and here's, here's the, again, here's a misconception as well, and I hope everyone can hear this one, is people, if anybody heard this and think, oh, but you had Wilfred Zaha, man. It's like, that's a, that's a, that's a given. Sure, saying, bro. Yeah. They have no idea. <laughs> they have no idea. No Doesn't idea. matter. Mm-mm. Doesn't matter either, whether it's, it could be David Beckham. Could be anybody. Name, pick a name. Yeah. Steph Curry. Could be anybody. Mm-hmm. Like the work that has to go in to to generate and mm-hmm. to keep going and to create mm-hmm. and to unearth opportunities. Mm-hmm. And to be honest with you, the bigger the profile, 
the bigger the opportunity you need to unearth, the more pressure. The more pressure. Or the bigger you say, more money, more problems. Like that, that, that stuff is real. And I've definitely dropped the bag a few times, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I just got to put that in there. Let you, know, let you guys know it's real, man. Yeah. I've definitely fumbled the bag a yeah. few times. Yeah, right? it's real. Mm. It's real. So I understand that, man. But I think like you've shown tremendous perseverance like to, to keep going even yeah. when you could not be doing it. And even just to take the leap, to be honest, because you, you said earlier that you don't like jumping into things, but to go and start your own agency is a bit of a jump, though. Yeah, it's definitely a big <laughs> jump, right? <laughs> it's a massive jump. It's a massive jump. But quickly, man, the mailroom, like, as always, like, so the gateway, we kind of talk about, like, bringing athletes, creatives, entrepreneurs together. Yeah. Learning from that success, from failures. I've taken a lot from this conversation, but, like, going forward. Yeah. What are we saying, man? Like, not to, not, not to like, be unearthing, like, all of your yeah, plans yeah, and ambitions, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I guess more of the same, but bigger, stronger, yeah. faster. I think, yeah. for me, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely transitioning to a new stage. We spoke about certain things just before, and that should let you know the scale that I'm, I'm looking to mm. grow at this point. Um, so that's number one, like, bringing in a more senior team that can help to really bring in the, the internal structure of the company. Um, obviously we always want more deals and right alignment. We don't care about just having everyone in the world, but we want the right people. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, you know, with, again, with the right people, I love collaboration. I don't believe in collaborating with everyone. That's honest truth. Yeah. But you know, like outside of me and you, like a lot of our, the guys that we, that we represent are really good friends. And we've spoken about for a long time about doing crossover 100%. content and, and opportunities. And I think that's a beautiful thing because you normally get into a space like this and people are, uh, you know, are always biting heads. Guarded, and for yeah. me, you, it's like, bro, what can we do, man? We spoke about podcast ideas. We spoke about content. Yeah. We even spoke about, I've got commercial opportunities here. It might not be right for us. Take. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And vice versa. Growth comes through collaboration. This, it can exactly. happen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So now no, I'm all for it. And, and you know, uh, you, the Gateway is your, is your home. Like Gateway Sports is bro, your man, home. Like, that's versa, that's bro, your people, man. man. And, you know, you, I want man. you to be extremely successful. Yes. To be fair, if, if you're successful, I feel like I'm going to be successful. I, and, but, and the same, bro. You know what I mean? Because I know, and like, same. we're, we're going to carry it. So, yeah, yeah man. Bro, it's, it's love. No, thank you and, very um, much, bro. I'm looking forward to what comes next, bro. And the same with you, man. I just got to give you your props. You can't sign out on me like that, man, without <laughs> giving you <laughs> nah, your flowers, bro. Because what you do, what we do is not easy. And I watch and I see how hands are on you are. Do you get what I'm saying? I appreciate it, man. Just make it work, man. Yeah, that's it, bro. Yeah? Sick. Right, appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs>